Hi beautiful people, welcome to Kate Space. Thanks so much for stopping by. Welcome to my channel if you're new and I'd love you to subscribe. And welcome to all my lovely follow uh, subscribers who keep turning up <laughs> to watch my videos. Uh, I'm just a Kiwi girl, you know, in this very small country, small corner of the world. Uh, trying to connect, I guess, with other crafters. And uh, we have a very small community here, so... For me, it involves getting on here and chatting to uh, to you guys. And I just want to say thank you for all the support. Thanks for all the support and great feedback for my first Graphics Fairy Design Team project. I really appreciate, uh, yeah, just the comments and, and feedback for that. And also for this journal, which, you know, I, I did struggle with. And I just really appreciate all the helpful and comments and feedback. And yeah, it's just it's just so cool that that we can be there and and help each other out from a distance, I guess. Um, so I do appreciate it. And yeah, well, let's continue with this fabric journal. I'm not hating it. I'm 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 kind of liking it actually, and I, I think the thing I like the most about it is the texture of it. Just all the different textures. Now I did start get, gathering some papers, and then I went, oh my gosh, I was going to do this on video. So let's have a look at what I've managed to gather up. The first thing I did was make a template because this is an A5 folded in half. Uh, Sorry, no, I said that's what I said last time. It's an A4 piece of paper folded in half. So when you fold an A4 piece of paper in half to put in here, it's going to be too big. It's going to poke out the top and the bottom. So I've made a template slightly smaller, which I'm using. And then I found, I found this sort of scrappy tag. And uh, in, in, is something that I made yeah quite a quite a while ago so it's a just a collage tag but i liked the colors and the autumn feel of it and so i'm gonna maybe find a place for that in there i spent a bit of time fussy cutting out this gorgeous little flower fairy i found this piece of scrapbooking paper that i've had for a while but i liked the autumny leaves on it and on the inside uh, there's sort of the berries and the greens and the reds i've folded it up at this stage for now to make it the right height but i'm not sure i will actually have that pocket there and then i've gathered oh well i found this paper bag that i've done some stenciling on and i'd quite like to use this um that is some of the onion skin dyed paper there's some coffee dyed i thought i might pop in one of my um eco dyed papers i thought the colors kind of went well these are rose leaves and that's actually a rose a whole rose and these are pahutakawa flowers so yeah i thought that was kind of new zealandy there's some vintage manu uh, music manuscript you call it music um paper some just lined note paper this is out of a beautiful new zealand uh gardening book called images of a garden with the most beautiful illustrations through it and i thought i'd quite like to use this somehow because again i love the autumn feel of that so i've folded that round that way to make it the right size i'm not sure that i'll keep i don't know what i'm going to do on this side some more coffee dyed, just plain paper. This is kind of a yellow paper that I've coffee dyed. And it's got this kind of nice sort of texture to it. This is just some grungy grid paper that I coffee dyed. This is a book, a book page, obviously, from an old 1800s girls' own paper. And on the back is some old pattern paper that I've glued on the back to strengthen it. And on there is an autumn sort of poem. There's some Edith Holden. And I thought I'd pop that in that way maybe. There's This is some of the old diary that I've got from 1927. 
So some November and I was wondering about putting November the is it November the 25th that's Thanksgiving or is it the 24th maybe someone could let me know and I might put that date in here as well and then this is some old it's called treble cash it's an old book I found in a thrift store and it's just oh it's got a beautiful patina to it it's lovely and yellow so it must be quite old so I use that sometimes as as ledger paper I've got a few more bits of paper floating around some more book page here quite like this um, and the November pages out of the Edith Holden I found this piece which I quite like but I wasn't sure how I would get that to work but maybe that might make some nice journaling tags there's more Edith Holden and some more from the big New Zealand and I love this image and I really really want to use this somehow um, but I'm not sure how. So yeah, a few things there. I've got no digitals and I'm wondering whether I might just go old, old school and not have any digitals in this, in this journal. Just like the old days. <laughs> when I first started making journals, I didn't even really understand what digital or printables were off the computer. So um, I mean, that's only a couple of years ago. It wasn't because I didn't have a computer or know about the internet. It was just... I just yeah anyway I knew about scrapbooking paper and patterned paper but I wasn't that familiar with buying a printable kit from the internet right so I'm going to obviously fix this up yep it's it's um it's old and it's got a few little tears in it I don't actually mind that I cover those up with um with masking tape I'm going to do that and I might actually add a little bit of glue stick as well just to make it extra sticky just it doesn't need it doesn't need much the masking tape's pretty good it's not like washi which tends to come away for me washi tends to come away until I want it to and then it's like no I'm gonna actually tear the paper <laughs> that's really annoying Right, so there we go. We've got a nice strengthened page there. And how is everybody today? I hope you're all well. hope everyone is um, having time to craft and be creative. My sister and I were talking about, you know, the inevitable topic that seems to come up in every conversation these days, and that's around that... Um, COVID-19 and with the Delta variant now in New Zealand the whole change of direction for the government uh, was initially because we were a small island we were um, dealing with, with it with elimination but that's very much changed and now uh, the big push is for vaccination and vaccinations are being mandated in quite a lot of areas which is causing a lot of division, a lot of upset between people and uh, it, it becomes quite a popular topic of conversation, you could say. I find it, finding it quite, I don't want to say stressful, but I am finding it is affecting me in some ways, just just that it's always on your mind I guess and that I know that there are some people who are finding it very stressful and finding the fact that vaccination is going to be mandated for some you know for some people to work teachers nurses midwives uh, people in any industry that requires contact with people I don't know, some people are probably going to lose jobs maybe or just have a really hard decision to make around whether they want to get vaccinated. I, anyway, I don't want to turn this into actually, I wonder if I should even mention. And that's the other thing, as soon as you mention COVID or vaccination, it becomes, it can become quite emotive and I just want everybody, 
I'm the kind of person who just wants everybody to be to get along and to love each other and yeah but we were fine we were just saying how that's what I that's where I, where I was going with this was asking you how you were and whether you had any creative time because I find that spending some time at my desk being creative even if it's just doing something in my own personal journal whether and and it doesn't have to be good or amazing but just spending some time just switching off I find it very therapeutic and the other thing that I find really really good is is yoga I'm being, I've been finding going back to yoga really really good because often they'll address the fact that they know people are feeling stressed or or having trouble finding peace or their minds are going a million miles an hour and so they'll address that and and the yoga class will be um, based around those that fact I find that really good so yeah I am finding my yoga practice really helpful I um, used to do yoga quite regularly a, a number of years ago and Oh, just due to various things one of them being an injury but just moving house and moving suburbs I kind of stopped I stopped spending so much time going to yoga I've just recently got back into it I'm going to reinforce this because of the staple holes it, it doesn't feel like brittle paper but I just yeah I just feel like it's good to be reinforcing things yeah, it's just really good to be going back to yoga. There's a young woman who does a class really close to me. I can walk there and I try and get into that one. The only problem is now because of the because of the um, limited amount of people, you have to book. And if you don't book, you miss out. And I have actually missed out on her class a number of times. And I've also started going back to yoga in... Napier which is probably I don't know it's probably about a 15 minute drive from here and going back to the classes um, at the studio I used to go to and I've been really enjoying that and yesterday I went and it was just a beautiful class and it was just um, she just talked about having peace peace of mind and peace and yeah it was it was a good time out really enjoyed it so I don't know if you do yoga but if you've never tried it I'd highly recommend it it's it's a very very good practice to have and you don't have to be super amazing at it I mean I'm not I'm um, not anywhere near as flexible or as fit or as strong as what I used to be but I just go along and um, and you do it to your own level you don't have to worry about what anyone else is doing in the class and I just, yeah, I find it very, very good, very therapeutic. There you go. There's my little go and get some exercise rant. <laughs> okay, where are we at now? So, yeah, I do hope that you are managing to create and that it's, and that, yeah, that it gives you peace and, and, um, yeah, that, yeah, that things are okay where you are. Okay, so even, even, and, you know, a lot of people who are watching this know all this stuff. But if there's anyone who's new to making journals, as you can see, although I've cut everything the same size as the template, because everything pushes everything else forward, those inner pages are still going to poke out. So I'm going to have to go through and trim them. But I haven't decided what order I want them in yet. The other thing I want to do is deal with the inside of this. As you can see, it's, it's pretty messy. I want to... I really, really want to strengthen this, and I've got some stuff that I use for that. I don't know what it's called. Some people might know. Some people might know who've been making books for longer than me, or journals, shall we say. But this is actually proper book making kind of stuff, or it goes this way with the tapes but it's it's really nice and strong and it will provide lots of strength to the spine I think and then they'll also be fab well I put fabric as well anyway I'm gonna cut a piece of this I'll go down to the side here 
and cut it. And because it's nice and thin, whatever goes over the top won't really show. Um, it's not very, very straight, so we'll just have to try and straighten it up afterwards. We have had some absolutely glorious days here and um, up to 29 degrees Celsius where I live, which is um, amazing for this time of the year. And today it's just gone grey and cloudy and raining, which is fine because I am happy for the rain. I've planted some things in my vegetable garden. And I put pop some things up on my stories of of some flowers that I've planted. I'm not very good at making things straight, so let's just see how we go with that. Probably only needs to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my ruler. I'll just line the bottom up as straight as I can or maybe one of those that would be good I'll do that so the stripes and I'm gonna put my ruler here the grid mats are amazing they do help with people who are challenged in this area of um, getting things straight that's me So I'm going to cut down those two lines and that should be relatively even. I want to call this mull, but I'm not I'm not sure that it is. I could do some research, I guess. It's one of those things when I'm looking at it and using it, I think, oh, I must do some research and actually find out what the technical term is for this fabric. And then when I'm doing, when I'm not, <laughs> I totally forget because I, my mind goes elsewhere. So I don't want that to go below. I don't want it poking out there or there. I'm just going to fold that over. such a wonderful time I was just thinking again today and I'm, I probably mentioned it in the first video doing this book that having my daughter and her partner here and I don't know it was it was so wonderful but it just made me miss my other children so much and I just think of all the people who don't get to see their loved ones on a re, you know on a regular basis right I'm just actually pondering what glue I'm going to use here I'm just going to use the Aileen's. It will come through, but I'm probably going to cover over. Um, so I'm just going to... Am I going to take these down, trim these a bit? Probably don't need to do that now. Just trim these threads. Yes, so the rain's good for the veggie garden. I've planted, if anyone's interested, I've planted um, courgettes. So funny when I, well, I think it's funny. You might not think it's funny. But when I was buying the courgette plant, there's, there's, um, there's like a health food sort of store, whole food store below where I go to yoga and, and um, it's all organic. And someone, they sell seedlings and stuff there and I love buying my seedlings there I've always found had real good luck with them and I was looking at the courgettes and I thought oh I'd quite like to grow some courgettes this year I've done it I have grown courgettes before and they're massive they take up so much space and I've got a couple of um, sort of raised beds that I plant my vegetables in 
and I'm just folding that to get it relatively in the middle. I'm not super, super worried if it's not exactly in the middle. Um, and there was an elderly lady, and she was chatting to another elderly lady there. And I, I kind of soon realized she was helping her choose her plants. And then when I grabbed my courgette and she just, I don't know, she said something to me and I said, oh, yeah, I'm just just starting, you know, I want to plant some things. And I've got a courgette here. I think, I don't know if it's going to be the right one. And and she said, oh, I said, I haven't got a lot of room. And I know my last courgette grew really big. She goes, oh, I'll try this one. I've just helped that other lady. <laughs> she was very nice. I've just helped that other lady. And so she directed me to one that is a much smaller much smaller courgette plant or zucchini if you're wondering what i'm talking about zucchini same thing and on the description it said um small what did it say no oh, i can't remember now something in compact and high bushy compact and high yielding and i thought to myself wow that could just be this my just description of me <laughs> i've had four children which makes me pretty high yielding i've got like really curly quite frizzy hair which i try and tame on a regular basis and i'm quite well i'm very short let's let's not beat about the bush i am very short so <laughs> i was cracking up i talked to david later and i said i think that's going to be whenever I, anyone asks me to describe myself i decided i'm going to call myself bushy compact bushy and high yield high yielding <laughs> oh dear appeal to my sense of humor anyway so i got that one thanks to that lovely helpful lady and i bought a little tomato plant which will grow uh sort of um what do you call them mini tomatoes cherry tomatoes oh there's something big under there what is that oh something's come off <laughs> something's come off the glue excuse me i'll just put that in the bin uh cherry tomatoes what else about oh and i bought like um a punnet of dwarf green beans thought i'd give those a go david's a a green bean fan so there we go that's that's what i bought and since then i've bought i've bought something else oh i bought a punnet of lettuces the other day so um some drunken ladies and some butter crunch lettuces. So hopefully they'll come on. Yeah, I'm just gonna go like that and then open it. Yeah, so the glue is sticky through. Now what I wanna think about is, what are we gonna line? What am I gonna line this with? And actually, this would be quite neat, but I don't think there's going to be enough for both sides. It would be cool if there was, but even at the front, that would be quite neat. Quite like that. But unfortunately, there won't be enough for the back as well. And then I thought, oh, maybe we could use one of the Edith Holden book pages no I think I want something that matches because that the other thing is whether I put it like this and that helps strengthen by going right across rather than having a separate thing there and a separate thing there that comes to the middle I think that's what I want to do and then I hopefully it will bend all right The other thing that's the one of the things i miss about having sort of crafty friends locally is you know if you were sitting here doing that you'd be going oh you know i'm not sure what to do and they'd go oh this is you know you should try this or do this and it's like so cool having that kind of banter amongst people so i've got these i don't love that but I just saw something just now that might work. Where did I see it? 
I actually really like this paper. I'm just wondering if I might use this. If that works. I kind of feel like it does. It goes up this way. But it's not. It's not very um, heavy. But that might be a good thing. I don't mind it being a nice flexible cover. So yeah, I might just go with this. So let's try and get this the right size. Turn it around. Oh, that's a ripped bit there. Let's just check that that's not going to be, uh, that might be a problem. Although I've used cool old sellotape and things like that in the past to remedy those sorts of problems. So we could collage something. Mm, maybe not. Maybe I don't want to use a torn piece of paper. I like this. Maybe we'll just go with this. Some nice texture to it. Yeah, I'm going to use this. That wasn't so bad. I've chosen this and I'm going to cut it to size. And then I'm going to try and glue it in and hopefully get it right in that fold so that it, it works for me. Um, just thinking about, I actually like the bottom, I think. Or do I want the top? I, get, I really want this bird. And then I was just thinking I quite like that bird. Okay, so I want it to go really close to the edge. hard when you can't go right over because you don't want to see my big bushy grey hair. <laughs> Small and bushy, compact and bushy and high yielding. <laughs> I wish I was a bit more high yielding with the bookmaking. Right, I'm going to cut this on my cutter. I think these colours kind of work really well with this fabric that I've used. Uh, Mel in her uh, tutorial doesn't really go into details about how she lines the inside of her journals. I don't think anyway. If she has, I didn't see that part of it. I don't know whether I just glue this in and then just bend it. That's what I'm going to do. I think I want to rough it up a little bit and ink it. And just make it a bit more old looking. So I'm just going to do that now. I'll do it off camera because I want to keep the dust away from my laptop. For those of you who haven't seen me do this, I basically just use something like this. This has got like a sandpapery stuff on one side and this roughing. And this is basically a podiatrist or, you know, when you get a, a foot thing. Gets the skin off your foot, but I don't use it for that. And it just roughs up your pages really nicely. You can get a proper tool for it or you can use the edge of your scissors or um, even an emery board, I guess, or get a, get some kind of sandpaper and wrap it around a block and make your own block. Right, now I have new inks. I bought myself another Vintage Photo Distress ink and I bought Distress Oxide in tea dye. Because I kind of wanted a lighter brown, but I'm just not sure if that's really the one I want. And then I bought myself some foams and I bought the rectangle ones. So I'm doing <laughs> I'm doing a bit of a MacGyver and um, turning it into a circle one. Not overly successfully, I have to say. But I'm just, I'm not entirely sure. I haven't used oxide inks before. And I'm nervous. This is called tea dye and I wondered if I should have, maybe I should have got, not sure. Anyway, I'm going to go on there. I'll just put it, try and put a little bit on, but I'm not used to having new, new ink pads. My ink pads, some of my ink pads are so old. Oops, yeah, that's what I didn't want to do. Uh, they're so old that, I mean, they were, I'm pretty sure that the majority of them were given to me 
oh, years ago and I've held on to them, which goes to show how amazing they are, how long they last. But I've been talking about replacing some of my inks for so long. <laughs> but I'm like, oh, do I get the oxides or do I get the distress inks? And then, you know, I, I make a decision and then the shop that I go to buy it from don't have that particular ink or it's out of stock. I know those aren't big kind of serious problems, but <laughs> so I'm wondering if I should have got the antique linen. Um, this is kind of quite orange, orangey. And then of course the, this is super dark now and i'm not used to having anything quite that dark so i'm just going to go over the top with the dark one try and go easy on it one of my favorite inks that i used to use we're talking when we were scrapbooking and we used to do all these curly edges and and all this sort of aging way back in the day um was like a really lovely light brown one but i don't know if you can get it anymore we used to use walnut i think we used to use a walnut versamart walnut and this other one this one look at that that's really um it's really seen better days but it's just oh, i suppose it's if you compare it to the tea dye hmm it's not much different, but I'd love something that back at that tone. It's just a little bit lighter. Oh, I'm in my camera there. It's a little bit lighter. There we go. Anyway, just I think these were Heidi's. Are these Heidi swaps? Oh no, these were brought out by Prima, and the woman was the woman who did all this kind of. Ingville, Ing, Ingville Bloom Quick Dry Fluid Chalk Ink. Oh, I've got a pastel blue as well. Again, these were just, I've acquired these. I didn't buy them. My ones are long gone. So I might go round with some of this, mm, just with some of this, um, my art glitter glue and just, and just, tack this fabric down here so it's nice and So Air New Zealand, which is our obviously our national air line, we we have one because we're we're such a small country. Um, kindly sent Joe and I our emails telling us that our flights had been cancelled for the end of November. So that's our trip, our long-awaited trip i've been waiting for joe to come and visit me for many years it's just been a long time since she's managed to get down here and and we've booked flights and we had it all planned and now it doesn't look like it's going to happen very hard not to be disappointed um and the problem is i mean i would drive and she would drive too but at the moment we're not allowed to drive through auckland and we you know, she lives north of Auckland, I live south of Auckland, and there's only one way through. So that's that's a little bit disappointing. It also means that I um, it's a longer time. I just don't know when I'm going to get to see my parents again, who are, you know, they're old. And as you guys know, that my father's in a home, care home facility, and yeah, it just would be good to, but there are plans for it, things to ease um, and that's why there's this huge push for the vaccination because once 
each region. The regions of New Zealand are divided up into um, what we call district health boards. And I think there's 11 or 12 district health boards. I used to know that because I used to work in health, but uh, once they've basically mandated that once a district health, each district health board is at 90% vaccination rate, then a new system will come into place which will allow more freedoms. I'm not sure how long that would will take. But at this stage, there is no travel through Auckland, so... Right, so just gluing that down. I think I've done all the corners. I feel like that's a bit better. How long? Wow, that's 41 minutes already. I will be editing some of this, but it's amazing. I haven't been checking that how well I've been on camera as well. So I'm sorry if I've been a little out. I think I'll glue this edge on. I haven't trimmed this yet. I think I'll just I'll cut it to size. To the size I want. Was it made out? Oh, I'm going to cut my birdie off, aren't I? Oh, well, never mind. Sorry, birdie. Right, that's going to get cut off. Right, and then I'll rough this up and then I'll come back. Okay. <laughs> Let's just glue this on, shall we? We might as well. It might warp a little bit because this is, um, a wet glue but it will flatten out this is a very good strong glue being really pleased with this Aileen's glue as you guys know <clears throat> we don't get any of the beacons glues here that seem to be very very popular in the UK and in America uh, we have one that's an Australian glue called Halmars but Oh, I don't, I'm just, I've had a few things where I feel like I managed to peel them apart using that glue and I was like, oh, not very happy about that. So that's why I've started using this one. And I'm going to try and smooth it out because I don't want any gaps. I'm just going to try and spread this before it dries, just so there's less... I don't want bubbles. But now it's very warm, even though it's grey and rainy, it's quite warm today and I'm just realising we're gonna have to be a little bit more I'm gonna have to be a little bit quicker with gluing things. Now that summer is on its way, we might need to just speed up things speed things up a little bit. This feels like it's starting to dry already. So, yeah, seasonal changes. Right. Just going to put that down there. Okay. And see how we go with this. If you give me a little bit of wiggle room to get it how I want it. Okay. That's 
quite a bulky cover at the front, so. It's hard to lay it down flat. Which might prove to be, I think that's okay. I want it, you know, it's roughed up on purpose, so I'm okay with that. Yeah, that's going to be tricky getting to do it from the side. And I've put it on upside down. Okay. Okay, that's really disappointing. And I don't know if I'll be able to get it off, so... Wow. <laughs> That's all on video. <laughs> oh, I can't believe I did that. Well, no, I can believe I did that. That's quite upsetting. Good glue, though. Really good glue. <laughs> right. I guess we're going to start again. Oh, wow. What an idiot. Oh, my sister would be laughing right now at this. Wouldn't you, Joe, if you if you're watching? This won't be on video. I'm going to get I'll edit this off. I could cry actually. Such good glue. Right. <sighs> wow, that was so disappointing. Obviously, that wasn't meant to be that paper. I've had a little sulk in um, a woe is me moment but then I kind of think well maybe it was meant to be because I found this paper and I was umring and ahhing about which side to use because on the back it's a Teresa Collins scrapbooking paper it talks all about make a difference trust you and me life is good um, charming laughter is the best medicine dream count your blessings and this this journal is kind of a gratitude thankfulness journal so so as he said live with gratitude so maybe this was the right paper after all i'm going with that okay i don't want to make the same mistake twice which way up does this go here we go this gives you a clue it goes up that way oh i'm really nervous about gluing this on now <laughs> oh wow wow okay we we'll start again with the gluing. Okay, well, let's just check. That's the front of the journal, and this is the right way up. Okay. Please don't mess this up. <laughs> it's hard to get it straight when you can't lean over your work. And as I was saying before, when the journal's so bulky on the front, it's hard to get this to stick down. So it's all 
those buttons and things. Maybe I should have. Well, you can't stick those on after, can you? So we may have to put something heavy on this overnight. For at least for a few hours to make sure all these bits glue down and I think I'll dry it before I bend it I think I think that's how you do it oh right well we didn't get much done due to my um mistake I'm going to stop now. If you're not if you're not crafting along, but you'd like to, then you know, go. I'll link the video that that started this sort of process, this video off, the first video, so to speak, of us making this. I'd love you to join in. Um, and yeah, and make a, a collage journal as well. And um, obviously the, this is inspired by Mel from Moonside Parlour, which um, I will pop her link in the description below. And I'm follow I followed her tutorials and learned heaps from her. Again, thank you for all your comments and feedback. And thank you so much for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me today. And uh, wow, just goes to show we have these disasters and we can just try and we can fix them so you would never know that under here there's a bit of a a bit of a mess i mean there was a mess of stitching anyway so it's gonna be fine i'm i'm liking it right so thanks so much and i will see you again soon in the next video bye